Look right here. I see tanks and trucks 24-7. You know the deal. Um, I've got a three-part series for you. This has been filmed over three months. Hot as balls in Australia at the moment, so trying to get out to run these things. It ain't going to happen, bro. Um, this thing? Yeah, no. Nah. So, um, we're going to start off with the TFL Pursuit. Then we've got uh, the Zonda or the Blackjack. So this is going to be a part of a three-part series, but all in one. So, yeah, sit back and relax. So what it is, is basically um, we upgrade the boat or the boat is just being new with that purchase of Marketplace. Bring it into me. I fix it up, see what they need as far as upgrades or to get it running. And then we go run it. Then we move on to the next one. So enjoy the series, guys. And um, don't worry, it's uh, it's autumn now, fall, um, and so it's going to be cooling down so that we can get out, do some more racing, uh, race this, race that thing, the MCD and the Wolverine, um, that one there too. So, see you in the comments. Yeah, you. No, no, you. Okay, now this is back on the bench. I had it uh, probably a month ago to fix the aftermarket that's a tfl stinger <coughs> it was leaking wasn't installed properly uh, so i put in another stuffer tube stainless steel stuffer tube on cleaned it up and uh had a 120 hobby wing uh seeking uh stock motor we put a remo as you do got the graphene straps because they're the best but as you can see it's missing the speedy and popped the it popped it so what i believe it is i didn't have a kick up on the stainless steel stuffer tube so it is well such as fingers it was binding on there so i was probably putting too much load on the shaft and then just uh pop she goes so Werner's bought a ZTW 200 amp 8S, but he only run it on 6S. And now we're going to pull this, this donk out. See uh, Triple S. We're going to see what KB rating. I think it was 2000 for memory. I don't know, I might pull up the specs. But you can see on a video, watch, I'll cut away to a video and you can actually hear it winding and just crying out for help. <laughs> Look, look at Wider, he's running through my eyes. <laughs> Werner's running the Spectrum as well. Okay, we're back. So, as you can see, so I believe it was just the stress on that flexi shaft on that. So, what I'm going to do is pull all this out, pull the T bar out. I've got a bending spring. Right, here it is. I've got a bending spring. I think it's a do, bro. You get a whole set, set of three. I'm trying to get it now. So there. Any sparkies, electricians out there will know the old bending springs. And this was the tube that I used. Not too sure what size it is because it is a Imperial 316. I can't remember what it was, but you can see where I cut it. So what I'm gonna do is rip all this out. I'm gonna set it up. Get a better angle there, but we're looking at obviously upgrading the motor as well. How awesome is that jacket? Look at those outs. How cool are they? They're so beefy. All right, righty ho. I got this out. What a pain in the ass. You can see all that. Where's, uh, where's the other? Where's the other two? Uh, I want to keep that uh, for uh, mock up. I need the the mounts. Got this, got this out. Got that there. Got me bending spring in. So now I'm just gonna get that up there, then throw that in, check that angle. But what are the, 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 these? These. Where are you? Oh, there you are. These. On the side. What? So I'm going to change these to uh, nuts, uh, bolts, nuts, your mum, 
tie these about so then you can where am I you can you know screw it on screw them that way Try this. Okay, angle's a lot better. I got a lot of play, so I'm just gonna get those bolts just to make it easier. So should be able to do it that way. I did kink it up a little bit, but um, yeah, that is set nice and straight. Still gotta put that T T bar in over there. Set that, but I'm gonna order some bolts. There's no way I'm putting those cap heads back. They're, they're a waste of time. Absolute waste of time. So I'll order some bolts. A lot easier. A lot more flexibility and getting the wrench down there. So yeah. Alright. Good news. Yeah. Okay. So dismantled. So it's the stock. It's the triple S. 3660 KV 1620. I reckon a bit low for 6S. You know, a bit too talky. So we're going to go for the TP uh, 3640, which is a 36 diameter by 68 um, can. So I've already measured me. It's going to be measurements. So that's uh, 68 there. So we've got plenty. Plenty of air anyway, and he's running um, our CK 120, so we'll just change the plugs on those. No, sorry, ZTW 200, he's, he'll be running on those. So we'll get that replacement, TP 3640, I'll order those bolts. So we can recycle the jacket. Jacket looks pretty cool. So look at that beefy, mate. How good are they? And stainless. It's pretty good inside. Die ring's good. Not much rust, so that's good. Got the mounts all done. Collet's pretty good. It's not. Uh, it's good for another go. Um, so the next thing is, like I said, order the bolts. Werner, the owner. I'm just going to order the uh, 1935 TP and he's already ordered the ZTW 200. So that's pretty straightforward. Alright, next step. Might be a while, but the magic of YouTube. Okay, Santa Claus came early, got the delivery from RC Boat and Werner went all out. I recommended the TP. Uh, 3640 which uh, 1935 so 1 to 2000 KV to run 6S we've recycled their jacket look at those those inlets how bulky are they they look awesome look like the uh, Thunder Tiger ones very bulky so 1935 I've dry fitted I have to do a little bit of how's it going to get it uh, to, to uh, seat correctly on the angle so it doesn't bind. Uh, put the bullets on. Speaking of bullets, there's I uh, got three six mil. Got the QS8 that he's recycled because again, that's what Werner runs. And this came in. This was the instigator. ZTW seal 200 amp. Now it's got a back. And built back six volt 80. So we're able to run the receiver and the servo. So two to eight S, but because we're running the TP 1935, uh, he won't be able to run eight S. So six S should hopefully run efficiently. This is awesome, just like it's a big brother, the 300 that we're going to be doing the builds on. This is awesome, awesome cat pack. Very sturdy aluminium casing. We've got uh, 10 gauge wire. Now, there's two cables there, and I'm assuming 
Um, one is programming. I'd say this one's the ESC and the programming. They kind of look like they're being paralleled anyway. Uh, so that's a, that's a three wire. Um, and then you got the motor wires there too. So, but, <coughs> excuse me, for the seal, if you've got an iPhone or Apple, this is the Bluetooth dongle, but the thing is it's a four. So clock and pulse is on here, so it's a four wire. So you've got positive and negative, and then you've got signal, and then I'd probably assume it's a clock or set. So it sends and receives. So I've got to do some more homework on this because the um, this was the quick guide, you might as well say, to it. So there's nothing that I haven't read all before. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to solder all these up and then I'm going to dry fit it. But that's the update so far. On this so this probably took uh, two weeks to get in so okay gonna get into it done all done all done all done qs8 in little tip guys get the other plug push it in when you're actually soldering this in and it stops these from moving around because you're applying a fair bit of heat 10 gauge especially for 8 gauge 8 gauge and 7 and 6 gauge on the MGM stuff it really needs to be secure so they make sure they are straight as an arrow so that was easy I uh, got the 6mm bullets on the TP meter was good actually it was easy to tin these wires usually they come uh, from factory they got um, I think it's the it's, it's like a, a, a waxy grease on it and it and it burns burns dark and it's really hard to tin these but they were pretty straightforward i uh, didn't have my jig so it was a bit hard but um nothing but a bit of bloody pliers and rubber band um could do there's a uh, aussie rc playground uh Vass's technique um, so now I think I have to put a bead of silicon around here. I might pressure test the jacket because it is a bit loosey-goosey. I think the O-rings may have been worn over the time. Plus it did run hot, so yeah. So i got to play around with the rails, do a little bit of grinding so I can fit before. I've um, done a bit more research on the ZTW. Looks like it's the... Generation 1 or the first version um, of the um, SEAL 200 amp. Uh, the other one, the they have a G2 200 and that looks very, well it looks basically exactly the same as the, um, as the 300 amp G2 version. So it looks like, I'm going to see if there's a, we've got a program card or I've got to get Werner to buy one. I might still power it up and see if it will connect, but I don't think so because it's a four pin and that's a three pin as well. So I'm going to muck around with it and put it in the boat. Yeah, summer in Sydney, thunder and lightning. All right, I'll show you what I'm up to. And it's like 30, high 35 today. So like a 90, 100, whatever. Uh, okay, took out the, um, took out this. So I could get me fat sausage fingers in, in there. Um, I'm just, just uh, plumbed it all up. I'm just wanna pressure test it, run some water through for the jacket. Um, Cause the TP has got that, uh, it's got that turned edge. Um, whereas the other ones are straight. So mm, it's gonna be interesting. Pain the ass man. 
You know how it's learned about bolts? No, I just use a traditional Allen key. But that's the thing. I don't know if I got a bloody traditional <laughs> Allen key. Damn Allen. So that's in. Um, angle's set pretty well. Uh, it's not binding on anything. So it's snooze. So everything's kind of loosey goosey in there, and now I've got to tighten it up. But I don't have a bloody Allen key, so I've got to try to find one. Oh, I'll see you in a week. Mm. <laughs> I'm a dickhead, eh? I forgot all about it. It goes to show how much of an MIP snob I am. I forgot about these old school. Man, shout out to the people that actually use these. Oh. So all tight, all ready to go. Werner, you better you better appreciate this, bro, because there's a lot of choice words said. Um, so I was able to uh, get that angle. It's aggressive and it's nice. Man, that is so coggy. That 935, it's gonna scream. No movement. Sorry, over here. No movement. So coggy, nothing is binding. Oof. Okay, ESC, it's going, it's going there. I have to put it there. There's too much because I got the receiver there because you got the aerial. So if the cable, uh, where are you? Come here. <clears throat> so we're gonna make. Oh yeah, there's enough. We're gonna make the uh, cable work. So. I need the brace to rest it on. Always put an extension on. Is that on the piss? Or is my camera on the piss? No, 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 no. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Okay, let's give it time. Like an hour. Done. Um, that was okay. Not bad. I uh, was able to get the cable down here. No receiver. The uh, Futaba receiver was was cactus. Channel one was good. Channel two, I could not uh, get to work. So um, that's all right. I'll let Werner know that he needs a whatever receiver for it. Um. But um, powered it up, I was able to um, get throttle cowl on my setup that I used. I uh, got the steering. Uh, the only thing with these are ZTWs, I think on the stock, they must have a uh, the, the punch. Uh, acts kind of like a variable speed drive for you mechanical guys. Um, it's like uh, there's no response between uh, 0 to 20% on throttle. Then kind of when you get to 20 plus, then it starts kicking in. It's kind of like a soft start as a VSD. Um, so I want to change the program on that. I have to get Werner to actually buy the program. I'm not, um, I think on the Firewire system, it's a ground positive and then it's transmit and receive. So I think the um, receive is the the fourth cable on there which kind of makes sense because it's uh, data locking so come out uh, nice and clean as always um, Wern again has got to put that in um, everything else was good um, I think uh, yeah that was it red K the red tubes in there because that's all I had left and that diameter uh, so aesthetics only but all in all was pretty good. 
Lovecraft things. All right, let's uh, get some run footage and see how this thing goes on the water with the ZTWC 200. G1, not G2. Test run. With the new ZTW, this thing is off its chops. <laughs> Mate, how was that? Oh, oh. Keep you in frame now. Look at that. That's awesome. Oh, for days. Ooh. It was like you're aiming for it. All right, that wraps up that one. Uh, we only got a little bit of footage. It was just one of those days where nothing went right. Drone ran out of battery, didn't have the cable. Yep, it just... But lucky, I was I got around about a, a minute's footage of the pursuit running, and boy, did it did it rock and roll! It was bloody awesome. It's probably the best it's been. Um, the pursuit has that uh, tendency to cavitate at the start, but with that ZTW, even though it had that spooling like the VSD that we always talk about on the the ZTW uh, ESCs, it still got out and boogied pretty quick. So that was pretty good. Um, hopefully, we get some more footage of that. But the next one is either the Zonda or the Blackjack in the video series. So, alright, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you at the next one.